Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to take a look at my first of two SLI videos. Now the next one's going to be coming a little bit later but it's just to let you know that we do have both planned and that's we're going to be doing the dual 1080s today and then uh, probably next week as long as I can get my uh, shiznies together so my stuff together is a dual 1070s. We're doing both of the MSI ones. MSI have been absolute legends and they uh, sorted me out right from the get-go, like literally the second we first started talking about reviews, they were like, do you want to do two? Well, duh, of course we want to do two, because I know you want me to do two, two. Too many twos, yes, too many twos. So, £629 each at the uh, current rate, you know, online. So £1,260 worth of graphics cards. So it's a lot of money's worth of stuff. But what you really want to know is, is it worth it? Should we be doing it? What kind of numbers that we can get? Yada, 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 yada. And yes, in a sec, I will explain to you about the high bandwidth bridge and all that sort of stuff as well. But let's stop me yabbering on and let's get down to at least looking at part of the prettiness. So this is our new test rig. But first of all, what you can see is I do have the uh, older version or, you know, it's not the H, uh, high bandwidth version MSI bridge in. But if I bring this little graph up for you, basically this explains uh, the difference between them and when you need them. Now the standard bridge would be the uh, floppy one that you would get inside the motherboard box. You know, the little flexible SLI one that you get with all your motherboards. So that is good for 1920 by 1080 and then uh, 2560 by 1440 at 60 hertz. But then if you have a look with the LED bridge, you can see it's got more ticks. So it can do 2560 by 1440 at 120 hertz. And then 4K would be uh, at 60 hertz. So the time that we need the HB bridge is basically 4K at high refresh rates, although we're still lagging behind with monitors there really. 5K if you've got you know, a much larger, larger um, uh, specification screen. But most importantly, surround. So with the bridge that I've got here on show today, for 4K testing, it's actually fine. Now I know a lot of people want to do the difference between them and you know, is it going to improve performance? It looks like it's only going to improve performance in certain scenarios, but we've got a good quality um, uh, LED bridge, so we should be fine for normal 4K testing. I did ask NVIDIA for one, but the only uh, uh, HB bridge that they had for me was one where the cards would have been totally sandwiched together, which for a, a performance system like this with decently spaced out uh, PCI Express slots, yeah, uh, and then I would have been having to put a card in, you know, essentially it just wasn't for me. So what we're going to do is I'm going to wait until either MSI's ones come out, which I have been told now should be August, or until NVIDIA gets some with a, a decent slot. And I only really want at least one slot gap, but until I can get some of those, I won't be doing the, the, H, uh, the high bandwidth stuff, but we, we're only really gonna need it, as I've shown you before, for really high um, frame rate 4K screens, or um, uh, when we do the surround stuff. And I have got three 1440p 165 hertz screens that are literally just sat waiting for high bandwidth testing. So we are there. Anyway, our new test system, we've obviously got the two super sexy MSI gaming cards. And if you haven't seen it, go and have a look at the main review because I've actually taken the cards apart. Don't worry, I've thermal tested them since as well, but I'll show you all the underneath with the cards. This review today is just gonna be about the performance. We're not gonna go too much into it, but we've obviously got to show you the new test rig because we're running uh, the new X99 6850K, uh, which is 12 core, six threads. We've then got um, some 3200 megahertz memory in there. We've changed the power supply because everyone kept pointing out that our um, AX1500i was overkill. And to be honest with you, there was only like three or four times that it was ever required. But it, today, even this 1000 watt is a little bit overkill, as I'll show you when we talk about it in the graphs. Cables are from Cable Mod. They are cable mod cable combs as well, but the only reason why they look bad is me, it's my noob, I need to sort these out. 
I just need some more time really to be able to play with them. These have got uh, cable combs, these don't. We're running two 480 gigabyte uh, SSDs and RAID 0. That is just our game drive. That was just how it, it, how it fell out. I just wanted one big drive rather than having to have two separate ones. We've got a uh, 512 gigabyte Force LX for the uh, OS case. I keep getting asked. It is a Corsair 760T. Uh, and we just banged some vinyl graphics on the outside. It's not paint or anything like that, but it's just the case that we uh, do our testing in. Uh, we keep the side on when we do our um, testing as well, especially when it comes to doing thermal testing, because then it makes it um, fair. It's a real world system. Uh, and uh, we're now on Windows 12 as well, which is why we've now got DirectX 12 results. Uh, and all of our games are done completely maxed out and we do 1080, 1440, 4K, which means if we do DX11 and DX12, that we have to run them lots and lots and lots of times. So we do put quite a little bit of work in for you. So I am gonna try and whiz through this as quick as I possibly can do, because at the end of the day, you've seen loads of stuff on the MSI card before, or I'm assuming that you have done, um, although not from UK people, because I've got the only two in the UK for press at the moment. Um, but, uh, You've seen quite a lot on this card, so it's really going to be about numbers and stuff, and I don't need to show you screen. So, the first one that we're going to do is 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra 4K. We bring this up on the screen, and it's like, oh my days, it's top the graph. Two cards have gone past four cards, because the next one down is 980 Quad SLI. Not two SLI, Quad SLI. And then below that, it's two 980 Ties in SLI. And you can see, uh, that obviously we're gonna get driver performance bumps with these, but it's a fair old gap from 980 Ti SLI, which is 8,300. And then we almost get 1,700 points more out of the two MSI 1080s. So there's a lot of results in that graph for you to look at. You can go down, if you see, go down further down, you can see where Furies would be and where Fury X's would be. So you've got a lot of information that you can pick out of that if you're interested. The first of the games that we're gonna do, and we did this one with Hitman Absolution, and one thing I will say right now is go and have a look on the website because we do all of the games there for you to go and have a look at. Um, and then you can see all of the resolutions and all the other games as well because we've now got 11 games in our test suite which we do at three resolutions, and uh, where possible we do DX11 and DX12 tests. And uh, as things start to calm down a little bit more and I've not got piles of graphics cards to get through, I am gonna start adding more games in as well. Uh, and if you can't see a result in the graph, then gen generally it's either fallen off the bottom or we just don't have a result for that particular one. Like before I was getting asked, about results for the 295X2. And the reason why I'm showing you the Hitman result this time is if you have a look where the 1080 game in SLI is and where the 1080 Strix is, you can actually see that the uh, um, uh, power color 295X2 is actually quite high in the graph on this one. But nevertheless, 1080 game in SLI, you can see it's there and it's only beaten by the Matrix uh, 980 Thai SLIs um, uh, and the Strix uh, SLI above it. So uh, I'm showing you this as a bit of balance. With the graph before, you could see that it, it was beat and everything. With this one, you can see that the 980 ties just about sneak in front. So the new cards uh, do like the um, uh, benchmarks, but with the games, they're not quite in front yet. But I would, um, as we'll talk a little bit more, remind me to tell you about drivers. Uh, so when we go on, this one, oh, we're gonna talk about drivers. So. Um, this one is the new Hitman. Uh, so this is the one where we can do DX11 and DX12. And it's pretty clear with these results that there isn't any SLI profiles yet. Um, and you can pause if you want to see those. Uh, when we go on to the next one, Rise of the Tomb Raider, pretty much the same I would say as well. DX11 and DX12 don't particularly get much of a, any boost with the two cards at all. Uh, and then uh, the last graph that I'm going to show you is Power Draw. But the two games that we've just done previously, I've shown you those on purpose because they're not um, uh, picking up the two cards really at all. Now, this is going to be a new driver thing. It's not the card's fault. It's not MSI's fault. It's just an NVIDIA driver thing, the fact they are so new. With the uh, launch driver that uh, came, uh, that I was given for the cards, 
SLI wasn't even an option and I had to go and get the very latest driver which I technically got a little bit early and it wasn't even on the NVIDIA website yet but that was when the SLI profiles had finally kicked in. Uh, until I got that new driver there wasn't even any options for me so we're going to say that we're on the uh, initial SLI driver from NVIDIA so some of the games are um, uh, not really whether it's not got a profile yet or it's just not being able to see it with the new games I'm sure it will get fixed it's just the fact that it's new tech new drivers it will all catch up um, and they are pretty good with sorting out the main titles as well the fact that you've got somebody like me going hang on a minute it's not working on two that normally is enough for someone somewhere to go and moan at Nvidia and then that accelerates things which is why I'm making such a big point about saying about it but power draw is our last graph and power draw is the one that I think is hilarious absolutely hilarious considering the fact and if I bring the graph up you will see the whole system not just the cards the whole system pulled 540 watts at max load that was the absolute top end that I could get from it to pull from the wall which is insane when if you I mean it it's I'm not picking on AMD but you can see just below that um, a single 390X was only pulling 27 watts less as this entire system is with two cards in. Uh, if you go above two uh, 980 tie Strix, you're looking at 104 watts more being pulled from the wall. And then when you go up again uh, to the uh, Matrix 980 tie SLI rather than the uh, Strix SLI, you're looking at close to 200 watts more being pulled from the wall. Um, and we've shown that they can perform around the sort of uh, same kind of ballpark anyway. Uh, so those type of numbers <laughs> is crazy. I mean, uh, I've done SLI, uh, I've done some tests with power supplies and stuff in the, in the past. Uh, quite a few tests really. But at the end of the day, 540 watts on this, you could, if you had a decent 750 or 850 watt power supply that had the connections that you would want, uh, these graphics cards are fine with daisy chains. So if it's got a couple of daisy chains, then you could easily get away with a 750 or an 800 watt. Uh, with the 1000 watt that we've got in here at the moment, it does have more cables available. So if you were running the native cables, you could run um, uh, individual cables with the 1000 watt. So it would, uh, you'd have four PCI Express cables coming out of the power supply. But the most important thing to think about is that 540 watt at max load is in the kind of 50% power territory where it's going to be running most efficient. Uh, so when you're gaming, um, it's almost in that sweet spot. And the other crazy thing is, is uh, when we were benchmarking, the fan on the power supply didn't spin at all. Now that's uh, a power supply specific thing, but you get the type of points that I'm trying to make you here, that efficiency and things of moving on so much now that you can have a dual card system um, that is just pulling next to nothing. And don't forget we're on an overclocked 2011 system with fans and I've got a front bay thing in there that's lit up. So uh, it's not a, a whittled down like environmentally friendly system at all. You know, we've got the uh, um, H100i V2 in there. So there's a pump, so that's something else working. LED fans. You know, we've not tried to save power with this at all. So, moving that aside, and I won't bore you, we will go into the conclusion. Uh, at the end of the day, would I say that it's particularly needed? I mean, if you really want super high frame rates, 1440, then you will love a pair of these cards. If you want better frame rates, 4K, you will love these cards, but because it's still quite early, you are going to be uh, getting the, you'll get the mix between the fact that whether your game actually supports it yet or not. Most of the older ones seem pretty fine. It's mainly the new ones with the DX12 options that seem to be getting um, uh, sort of tripped up, really. We even went to the point where we were looking for enable dual cards um, in settings and when we weren't getting the results that we want we were actually resetting the um, the game and resetting the system to see whether there was some little you know oh it's not quite happy but it just seems to be a, uh, a more of a driver specific thing because you are getting around decent single card performance 
So it's almost like it's just not really grabbed hold of that second one yet. And there is zero load going on to the second cards either because I did look into that. Other thing to talk to you about is temperatures. The, uh, a single card will run uh, sort of uh, around 70 degree mark, absolute top end. Uh, with this, with the two, the top card was getting up to around 80 degrees, but still staying, you know, quiet, silent, very, very quiet. And the card below it, you were looking around 77 degrees because obviously the card that's below can get uh, better fresh air and the card that's above is pulling air off of the top. So award wise, it's pretty self-explanatory really. It's the OC3D Enthusiast Grade Award. You do need to be prepared to spend a lot of money, but because of the fact that the efficiency and stuff's coming down, you now don't need to spend a lot of money on a graphics card and then go out and spend a lot of money on a power supply as well. But one thing I would say is just make sure that your uh, power supply is of a good quality. Whatever your chosen brand is, just make sure that you're not going, oh, it's all right, I've got a thousand watt, and then you've got some horrible kind of like uh, eBay thing in there, or you've bought a system from uh, like uh, one of the high street shops or something like that. Just because it's got enough connectors don't necessarily, doesn't necessarily mean um, it may be good enough to be powering these. Just think to yourself, if you've uh, spent, 1200 1300 1400 pound on a pair of these cards then then thinking to yourself you know have i got a decent power supply because your power supply in the bottom is the thing that's feeding everything so you don't want to overstress it um, so stick with one of the good well-known brands so the higher tier ones so we could be talking about superflower we could be talking about seasonic we could be talking about enemax uh, we could be talking about Corsair. Go with one of the good ones. Make sure it's got the cables that you want and uh, just go with a little bit over the top. I've shown you that this is going to pull about 500 watts, so we call it 600 watts. So you, I would say that you probably, you could get away with 750 and most of them, the cables are going to be there as well. But a decent 750, so gold rated uh, and one of the higher end versions in their range, not one of the cheap ones. Um, 850, lovely, 1000 watt, you actually then get into the point where you're like, well, yeah, 1000 watts overkill, but it does kind of fall into that little sweet spot. So hopefully I've given you enough to uh, think about. Uh, hopefully I've given you enough information on the system and powering it and you, you'll run away and love it. Long and short of it is, two 1080s. Oh my days, I want them so bad. But this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. And now I've got to go and strip these because they're going now out.